Good news. You can't gain fat cells. Bad news. You can't lose fat cells. Now, I know that sounds really disappointing, but there's a silver lining to all of this that I'm going to get to when I explain the science in this video. The simple point of this video is to describe exactly what's happening when we gain weight or when we lose weight and why some people, people that are typically overweight, really do have a tougher time burning fat and have a tougher time keeping it off. So I'm going to give you solutions on how you can keep that weight off utilizing some specific advantages that come to you by being a little bit overweight. And I know we have to come to terms with reality. If we're overweight, let's face it, we're overweight. I was 280 pounds before, I had to come to terms with the fact that I was overweight. So if you have some fat on you, it's all good. We just use it to our advantage to get leaner and get healthier. You are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. I wanna make sure you go ahead and hit that red subscribe button, and then go ahead and hit that bell icon so you can turn on notifications so you know whenever I go live. If you haven't already, I wanna make sure you check out Thrive Market down in the description below. So Thrive Market makes it so that you can get your groceries delivered right to your doorstep. Never have to leave your house if you really didn't want to. You can go online, get your groceries in the same way that you would get them in the grocery store, except they're gonna get delivered right to your doorstep and it ends up being cheaper in the grocery store. So all of my favorite fasting options, my keto options, my hormone optimization options, all these things are all there. So I've put together these specific Thrive boxes. So go ahead and check them out in the description after you watch this video. But now let's go ahead and let's get right to the fun stuff. So first off, it kind of goes without saying that fat cells aren't bad. Okay, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I'm all about healthy fats and all about getting your body to operate on fats as a fuel source, but fats really aren't bad. We have to stop that demonization, okay? The problem is when they start to accumulate too much, they form what is called adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is our body fat, right? Now, a little bit of adipose tissue is fine. We all have it. It's going to absorb shock. It's going to help protect our organs, give us some insulation, yada, yada. But when it starts to accumulate too much, it's really the side effects of the excess fat that becomes the problem. So we're talking about the fact that all the excess fat that we have ends up triggering hormonal changes within our bodies. It makes us different. It causes us to have a lot of estrogen floating around. Too much estrogen ends up causing us to store more body fat, which becomes unsightly, and et cetera, et cetera. But additionally, it takes up like all of our fat-soluble vitamins. So like the A, D, E, and K, like the good vitamins we need to burn more fat end up getting locked up in quarantine in our existing fat. So they get stuck there. And then lastly, any toxins that we consume or anything like that, they end up getting stored in our fat because it's a safer place for them to go than hitting our liver. So we end up having them stored in our fat. So long story short, our fat ends up a cesspool for a bunch of just wasted vitamins and a bunch of toxins. So yeah, we don't want it, but the fact is it's still okay stuff. So now let's get to what we need to talk about. You are essentially born with a specific number of fat cells. That's kind of the bummer. Now there's a study that was published in the journal Nature that found that we really have a set number of fat cells from the time we're born to 20 or 25. So what I mean by that is we can't really dictate how many fat cells we have. We're gonna have anywhere from 10 billion to 30 billion. Generally speaking, people that are overweight or obese have more fat cells than people that are not overweight. And it's simple. If you have more fat cells, it's more opportunity for fat to get stored. So what happens is fat cells don't accumulate, they enlarge. So we have existing fat cells and they just get bigger if we gain weight. So someone that has more fat cells clearly has more opportunity to gain weight. Envision a freeway with a bunch of fats driving down the freeway. Okay, someone that doesn't have a whole lot of fat cells only has an exit every five miles or so for fat to get off and do something. Someone that has a bunch of fat cells has an exit every quarter mile for fat to get off and store. So people that have more fat cells naturally will gain weight easier. It is more difficult for them, okay? Another thing that's interesting is when these fat cells die, they get repleted because it's set at a genetic level. So if a thousand fat cells were to die right now, a thousand new fat cells would come in. So it's not like we can ever get rid of them. And I know that's depressing to think about, but there are some really cool things that we'll talk about that you can do. And again, advantages if you have more fat cells. But briefly, let's talk about weight regain for a second. If you're someone that's overweight, you've probably noticed that when you lose weight, it's easier to regain weight. Now, it's hard, you can't compare yourself to others because you don't know how others feel, but science does show that people that are overweight or have more fat cells tend to regain weight a lot easier. And here's an interesting analogy to make it all make sense. Okay, when you have a large number of fat cells, 
they produce something known as leptin when they're totally full. So when a fat cell is full, it produces leptin. And this leptin tells the brain, hey, there's enough fat, we can go ahead and rev up the metabolism, okay? So when our fat cells are nice and full and happy, they're not telling the brain, eat more, eat more, okay? But what happens is as we lose weight, that leptin decreases, and that signals the brain to want us to store fat. Now, this is epicentered at the individual cell level. So what that means is that, again, I'm gonna use a very simple number here to make sense of it. If we have 10 fat cells, and these fat cells shrink in size because we lost weight. Well, when those 10 fat cells get hungry, we're gonna have 10 fat cells yelling at the brain to feed them. So it's like having 10 hungry children just barking orders, saying, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Now take that same situation, but with someone that only has five fat cells. They're still gonna get hungry, and their fat cells are still gonna demand that they get fed, but you only have five of them barking the orders. You only have five of them begging. It's like having 10 children versus five children. It costs more to feed 10 children. It's going to be more difficult. So when people try to compare apples to apples and take a naturally slim person or a naturally low uh, fat cell person compared to a naturally high fat cell person and try to say that it's equally difficult, it's not the case. It truly can be more difficult for people that are overweight. And you know, there's three sides to every story, yours, mine, and the truth, but this is what the science is seeming to show. So let's talk about the silver lining because this has kind of been depressing, right? Like we're saying, okay, well, what do I do? I just have more. I mean, on one hand, it's nice to be acknowledged and know that it is more difficult for you, but okay, what's a practical application for this? The main thing we need to focus on is something I talk about a lot, and that's lean body mass. Okay, lean body mass is our muscle tissue. Our muscle tissue is the biggest driving force of our metabolism, and I will go on record and say, at least as my opinion, that the positive effects of having muscle and the metabolic effect of lean body mass far outweigh the negative effects of having a larger amount of fat cells. Because the metabolism is super powerful, and if you have more lean body mass, it's gonna be more powerful than having billions of fat cells. It just is. So what we need to do is we need to make sure, if we are people that have a lot of fat cells, that we increase our lean body mass levels. Now here's where things get really cool. If you are someone that has a lot of fat cells, or you are overweight right now, it will be easier for you to build muscle. Studies are now showing that the energy that can be released from a fat cell can provide you with the energy needed to build muscle. That does not mean that fat turns into muscle. Okay, fat can't turn into muscle. That's not how it works. But fat can provide the fuel needed to support the metabolic drivers of building muscle. So studies show that generally when you look at an overweight person versus a slim person, and you have them start out on a weight training regimen, the overweight person is gonna build significantly more muscle, which means that they're going to be able to yield a higher rate of metabolism faster than a slim person. So you have a unique advantage, but you are the kind of person that needs to get in the gym a little bit more and do some weight training and focus on building some muscle. Okay, I know this because I was 280 pounds before. Okay, going into the gym, keeping muscle on me is my metabolic driver that overpowers the fact that I might have more fat cells, right? Okay, so that's what we need to pay attention to. Studies have also shown that all it takes is three to six weeks of weight training before you are starting to stimulate that lean body mass response. Very important stuff. Now, I don't wanna sound like any kind of zealot here when I talk about this, but this next thing is important. If you are not following some kind of low carb strategy, there is a huge benefit to it when it comes down to maintaining your lean body mass. The journal Nutrition and Metabolism published a study, took a look at 20 individuals, okay, and it had these 20 individuals go on a weight loss regimen where they lost 45 pounds in the course of four weeks. That's aggressive weight loss. Normally, what would happen if you lose weight that fast is you'd lose a bunch of muscle. You would lose fat and muscle. What does losing muscle do? Losing muscle slows your metabolism down because now you've hurt the ratio of fat to muscle. What's interesting is this study found that when they did the ketogenic diet, they could lose 45 pounds and not change their metabolism because their lean body mass stayed high. So their metabolism didn't change. Their resting metabolic rate didn't change if they lost that weight via the ketogenic diet. Okay, therefore making it so that your metabolism stays higher. So if you are overweight, you will get more effect by losing weight with the keto diet long term because you're gonna have less likelihood of rebounding because your metabolism is gonna stay high. You'll just have more flexibility. So again, this video wasn't about being depressing. It was about giving you a tool and hopefully motivating you and lighting a little bit of a fire that if you are one of these people that has more fat cells naturally, genetically, 
get in the gym, get the weight training going. Probably even more important than cardio at this point in time. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos or you wanna see more videos surrounding this kind of topic, just let me know. I'll see you soon.